Shop on eBay this holiday season to get more for your dough on stand mixers mm. or get more for your buck on this season's hottest tech and gaming gear. And on eBay, you can even get more <gasps> Ooh. bling for less cha-ching on jewelry. You can get more because you save more on premium brands with eBay's exclusive deals. Get more when you get it on eBay. What goes into making celebrations with your family great? Kohl's has the answer. Discover super comfy bedding from the big one for your guest room. Keurig coffee brewers for mornings spent together. And Bissell floor care for cleaning up after the fun is over. Oh, and really great gifts your family will love. Order online at Kohl's.com and choose fast and free store pickup or head to your nearest Kohl's store today. The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Ball DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Mike Apatria, joined by my good buddy, Harris Kamani. That means it's a Monday, November 14th. We got 11 games to talk about. Fully packed slate, but Harris, my man, how are you doing tonight? Ah, uh, can't complain, man. Long, long, nice weekend, but jump right into a 13 game slate, so it's uh, it's gonna be a wild night. Yeah, you say long, long weekend. Mine was mine just fell too short, uh, <laughs> way too short. So that's all right, though. We got a nice slate on our hands. We got the, you know the work week. They go by quick sometimes, so that's what I'm hoping for. A nice quick work week. And then get back to enjoy the weekend. I, I just went, did a bunch of furniture shopping all weekend. Uh, it's impossible to find furniture down here right now in Texas. So I'm struggling. <laughs> but uh, before we jump into anything, guys, a quick shout out to our presenting sponsors over at Manscaped. Guys, head over to manscaped.com. Check out the number one line of male grooming products. Everything from the lawnmower to the ear, nose, and hair trimmer, all the way down to the accessories, I guess you can call them. But now they've, they've become necessities uh, for me, like the toners. The aftershaves, the bombs, everything, they have it. You get the perfect package kit. Use the promo code HOOPBALL20. Get 20% off plus free shipping on your entire purchase. So that's HOOPBALL20 over at Manscaped. So we're going to jump right into things, Harris. Try to cruise through this one pretty quickly. 11-game slate. Boston Celtics traveling to Cleveland. Looks like they're going to be taking on the Cavs. So... And I think I said the 14th. It's the 15th, guys. I apologize for that. Jalen Brown ruled out. Josh Richardson, Al Horford, both probable. For the Cavs, Kevin Love, Lloyd Market, and Colin Sexton, Lamar Stevens, all have already been ruled out the night before. As far as a game total and a spread, it's a 200 game total. Boston being favored by two and a half. I'll start off with us right here real quick, Harris. I'll start off with the Celtics. I'll let you take the Cavaliers. Looking at this team, Jason Tatum getting a little bit of a decreased salary down below that 10K mark, which we haven't seen him over the past few days at 9,800. Absolutely in play. We have a lot of high price studs we're going to talk about, but uh, he's worth the 10K price tag when we know Jalen Brown's out. The usage will continue to be there for him. So I have no issues whatsoever looking at Jason Tatum. And it's worth noting these two teams just played. He had struggled in that one. But it was mostly from the field. He shot 8 of 22. The rebounds weren't there for him. It's a good bounce back situation, which is probably why you're getting such a decreased salary outside of him. I like Marcus Smart. I like Dennis Schroeder. I don't mind going back to the well with either one of these guys. Uh, I, I had Marcus Smart play extremely well outside of the fact that he didn't knock down a shot. He got five steals, eight assists. Did everything right for me in that slate, but not knocking down any shots. But I still think this is a really good matchup for him. I'm still going to look to play him a little bit here and there. And I don't mind Dennis Schroeder. He's just going to be playing second fiddle to Tatum. He's going to continue to have massive usage over here. Over the past two games, he has a combined shot attempts of 46. So when you talk about that kind of usage, those kinds of shot attempts, absolutely can consider. The ancillary stats, they're mediocre generally, but it's the heavy scoring that we're looking forward to. And he has that point guard and shooting guard eligibility. And I'm probably not going to go to much in the front court. A lot of front court guys we'll talk about. So I'll pass it over to you if you have anything else you want to add to Boston. Otherwise, pick us up on the Celtics, or I mean uh, Cleveland. Yeah, and I think the only guy out of all this that you've hit on is Josh Richardson, who's pretty much been the primary beneficiary as far as minutes are concerned since uh, since Jalen Brown has gone down. At 3,500, he continues to get 
you know, that uh, low 30s, high 20s uh, scenario where that allows him to get enough ancillary stats that even if he isn't necessarily knocking down his shots, he'll easily pay off his 3,500. So considering there are a lot of studs on this roster, uh, on this slate, that is, Josh Richardson is one of my uh, chief guys as far as the cheap side is concerned. But moving on to Cleveland themselves, and as you said, it's a bit of a scheduling quirk that Cleveland gets to play two home games back-to-back against Boston and came back from a 20-point deficit to be able to take that one. It was a pretty sick game altogether. But really, the head of that, the snake that got them back was Ricky Rubio, who's coming off the bench now, even though uh, Colin Sexton is out. But his minutes total has not really seen any sort of a major decrease. Played 33 in the last game. And even though he went 4 of 17 from the field, he was able to do enough across the board to get 35 in that one. And considering his price tag is still sitting at that 6,000, which is actually 100 less than last time, he's one of my main guys to be able to look at on this slate for Cleveland. And then secondly, Evan Mobley, who, you know, he still keeps hitting into that low 7,000s, which is a great price tag as far as I'm concerned for him because he's essentially got a floor of anywhere between 32 to 33 locked down for the foreseeable future, and he's given you that upside to be able to get to that uh, low to mid 40s. Dropped 42 in the last game, and... I mean, there isn't really anything about that previous stat line that makes it seem like he'd be chasing anything. He, he should be able to reproduce what he did against Boston yet again, night in, night out. And those are two main guys I'm looking for as far as Cleveland's concerned. If you're looking to uh, maybe save a little bit of money and uh, you know you like a little bit of dart throwing, I think Isaac Okoro is still a decent uh, spot to be able to get some decent usage for him. They've got him in the starting lineup. His minutes total was down last game, but it's mostly because he couldn't hit the side of a barn door. That being said, he's uh, been getting pretty good uh, rebounds for his out-of-position area, and then even if he can get his uh, seven to eight shot attempts, which were actually up to 12 in the Detroit game prior, he should be able to pay off his cheap salary as well to get you some of those studs. I agree with pretty much everything you said. I like Rubio. I don't mind playing a little bit of Mobley. Uh, Don't think I'll end up getting to their Coro well, but I mean, Rubio taking 17 shot attempts is not something that we're used to seeing with him. But it's an added bonus because you know the assists are going to be there. He's usually good for one to two steals. He's playing 30-plus minutes. A lot of ways he can chip in. But now the usage is actually going through him. And I think, you know, having him off the bench is not a negative. As long as he's playing those at least high, like, 28 to 33 minutes, we should see a pretty close return to him. At least 5X is what I imagine on most nights. And he always we've seen the upside plenty of times as well uh, for, you know, 7 to 8X as well, too. So we'll keep it moving on to the next game. Sacramento traveling to Detroit. Take it on the Pistons. This is a 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game for the Pistons. Saban Lee is in the G League tearing it up. Kelly Olynyk is out. And then for the Kings, everybody is good to go. Looking at game totals, we got a 213 game total. Sacramento being favored by four and a half. Pass it over to you, Harris. What are we looking at for this Kings? Yeah, and the Kings are just one of those teams where, honestly, their price tags are usually pretty appealing, but it's always, it seems like, uh, similar to what we've talked about with some of these other matchups, it's like picking who you think is going to come out on the night. And really, the only guy I've found myself trusting on on a regular-ish basis for the Sacramento Kings has been Rashawn Holmes. And at 6,800 on a team that's a bit uh, undersized as far as their front court is concerned. I mean, they're obviously running uh, more Stewart now. Jeremy Grant is playing a little bit of center for Sacramento, I mean, for Detroit as well. So that gives Rashawn Holmes more of those opportunities to be able to get a lot of those put-back buckets. He's been grabbing double-digit rebounds in the last two games, and as long as he's able to get inside there, you know he's good for double-digit scoring as well. So I like him at 6,800. And the other spot uh, that I'm always interested in is Tyrese Halliburton at 6,000. It's probably more of a, a cash one than a GPP, but honestly, his uh, shots just need to be going in at some sort of regularity for him to be able to pay it off because he's one of those guards that's able to get somewhere near triple doubles on most nights. In the last game as well, dropped an 8, 8, and 7, 31, uh, 31 for 6,000. And that's with him shooting 3 of 13. And I expect him to be able to do much better than that because his efficiency has been one of those things that's always been good for him. So... Those are the two major guys that I'm looking at as far as Sacramento is concerned. Awesome. Well, I mean, I, I, I never mind Halliburton. Uh, 6K, it's going to be tough for uh, the shooting guard eligibility gets in there. But it's a crowded 6K range at the guard position tonight. So you're going to have to make some choices. Yeah. I don't want to get too invested in this game as a whole. Uh, one guy I did want to talk about would be Metu, who started that last game, actually. Uh, came out. He only played 24 minutes in the start. It was his first start uh, of the season. So... Took 12 shot attempts, ended up giving us about 23.25 DK points in return. So if we hear that he's drawing another start, which he very mel- very might, I mean, the matchup doesn't really dictate it. 
because he started against Baisley uh, in that last one, and you think that they, you know, they might have to do something a little different in that scenario. But keep an eye on it. If he does draw the start, I'd have a little interest in him. Outside of him, probably not too too much over here. Wouldn't mind taking a shot at Holmes, but eleven games, a lot of centers, uh, and I, I wouldn't pair those two front guys, uh, front court guys together either. Some coffee's fast, but not fresh. Some coffee's fresh, but only after a long wait. Speedway coffee is made fresh at the push of a button, hot or iced, so you can have fresh coffee your way, right away. Find a store near you at speedway.com slash locations. On the Detroit side of things, there's definitely some things that we could look at. Cunningham's price keeps staying around that $55, $5,600 range. At that $5,500 range, I definitely have some interest in them. I always like targeting shooting guards going against Sacramento. It's kind of a thing I've done for the past, I would say, two, two and a half years at this point. Uh, and more often than not, I usually get a pretty decent return on it. So he's getting you get a little bit more comfortable shooting the three point uh, three point shot as we've seen since early on in the season. Shot attempts have been down over those past two games, but this team's urging him to shoot and continuing to urge him to shoot. So I definitely have some interest in looking at Cunningham. And then the other guy, obviously, I think that we need to talk about would be Isaiah Stewart. Came out, played great in that last one. Didn't give us the ancillary stats that we were looking for. You know, guy only got four boards when. We've seen him countless times in 20 to 15 minutes, get us eight or nine. Uh, so I expect him to write the ship. Yeah, I may not shoot nine of 11 in the next one. Uh, but a 5K, comfortable floor, comfortable ceiling. He could get into foul trouble pretty early. So with a little price bump, you might want to look elsewhere in cash just because we have a ton of options available. But in your GPPs, he's still very, very much in play for me. So I'll be looking at those two guys mostly. Um, and I don't think I'm going to chase that Killian Hayes game. Not a guy that I think is very, very good at basketball just yet, but maybe he can prove me wrong. Yeah, I was going to go the other way where Killian Hayes actually, well, having now got to see him once again up front and center you know, for that last game and uh, really seeing how he was getting himself involved in a lot more pick and roll action. Uh, you could see him easily get, getting somewhere close to that double digit assists uh, game as well. And I mean, his price tag is easily one with the minutes he's been getting over the last you know, three, four games now sitting into the high 20s, low 30s, where he should be able to pay off that 4,500 without too, too much trouble. So it's not necessarily one that I'm you know, jumping out of my seat to be able to get, but I do think that's a good price tag for him to get some good value. All right, we'll keep it moving. New Orleans Pelicans traveling to Washington. Take it on the Wizards for the Pelicans. Just Zion is out. And then for the Wizards, Bradley Beal is having another night off due to personal reasons. Davis Batons, Thomas Bryant, Rudy Hachimura are all ruled out as well. Looking at a game total and a spread, we don't have one. So we're going to have to keep our eye out for that once it comes up. But for now, we can guess that this is going to be pretty decently high total. I would imagine right around that 218 range, maybe 220 range. Uh, both teams play at a pretty decent pace. And neither team plays very much defense at all. So... Uh, I'll pass it over to you. Why don't you lead us off with the Pelicans? Yeah, and the problem that's kind of happened with regards to the Pelicans pricing is because Brandon Ingram's been out for a decent period of time and only now getting kind of his legs back into it, played 29 minutes in the last game, it's allowed the other guys to show out. So the prices have adjusted as a result. I mean, Jonas Valanciunas is now sitting up into the 9,000s where... I mean, usually I'd be pretty happy to be able to take a, a swipe at him just because he's able to just beast on the inside on a team, especially on Washington, where they are pretty undersized and I could see him having a good game once again. But just by and large, I mean, usually I'd say Josh Hart's good for 53, but unfortunately his usage is going to go down. The only guy I could potentially see myself uh, going into just because I expect this to, as you said, be a high scoring game is uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker at 5,900. He's just going to continue to get the kind of shot attempts that is going to allow him to get that, uh, you know, get him to 5x on his price tag. And he hasn't had you know, amazing shooting nights, especially from downtown over the last little while. But, you know, he's got the upside to be able to do that. They believe in him and uh, shooting guard eligibility makes it so that it's uh, interesting to me. Yeah, that's probably the only guy I really had any interest in. But I, I just don't see myself going to too much of these Pelicans for the reason you said. Now, uh, prices need to come back down for a lot of these guys. Ingram played a decent amount of minutes in that last game. I just don't know if they're going to get fully just like unleash him again. He played under 30. So there's a good chance that he's playing, you know, 32, 33. Uh, but a lot of these games that we saw him hitting his value on, in which he's pretty much been a 40-point floor kind of guy, uh, he was playing high to mid-30s. And I just don't know if we're going to get that in this. And then we're also paying a price tag for a guy that we need to play mid to high 30s. So on the Washington side of the ball, no Bradley Beal. We know a lot of these guys are going to be very, very much in play. Spencer Dinwiddie coming in at 7200 It's an expensive price tag for Dinwiddie. 
But it's a fast-paced matchup. Going against a guy like Devontae Graham, no issues looking at Dinwiddie at 7,200. He has a usage rate above uh, 32% when Bradley Beal is off the floor. Kuzma, another guy that you could expect to take some pretty high-volume shot attempts. Didn't shoot the ball as many times as I thought, but the high rebounding upside always gives him that little bit of a higher floor. So 6,700, small forward, power forward eligibility, definitely in play. His usage, usage uh, is right around 27 28% with no Beal on the floor. And then we know Harrell's is going to continue to dominate the second unit. And in 20 minutes, he just absolutely tanked in that last game. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go necessarily chasing this at 6,500. I'd want him to play a couple more minutes to feel a little bit better. But 20 minutes is probably the least amount of minutes he's played this season. So it wouldn't shock me if he ends up playing a little bit more, especially if we see that Gafford gets into some early foul trouble or anything like that going against Jonas, which that wouldn't shock me either. And then I don't mind taking stabs at these cheaper guys. Aaron Holiday drew the start in that last one, played big minutes, played 35 minutes at 3,500, point guard and shooting guard eligible. Uh, uh, eligible. You could take a look at him. Yeah, you know, if you're if you're stacking, if you're trying to get you know some action on both sides of the ball, you don't want to spend up on all three of those guys or two of those guys. It makes sense if you just want to try to cram some you know cheapies in there. That way you can get some of these studs. No issues looking at them. Um, and that's probably it. You know, Caldwell Pope. He had a high usage in that last game at 4100. I think he makes for a very contrarian play if you want to get some exposure to it. But by no means is he safe enough for cash. He's got a nice low price tag at 4100, but it, it wouldn't shock me if he finishes his game with close to 14, 15 shot attempts. Uh, it's just whether or not he knocks him down. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's pretty much those three major guys and maybe a little bit of KCP just because of that uh, small forward eligibility. We know we, we hate that small forward position. For most <laughs> pretty much. Uh, all right. Moving on to the next game, 730 Eastern Standard Time game. Orlando Magic traveling to Atlanta. They are taking on the Hawks. So uh, looking at this game right now, no game total for the Hawks. Second half of the back-to-back for them for Orlando. Michael Carter-Williams. I'm sorry, no, no uh, injury report. Michael Carter-Williams, Markel Fultz, Jonathan Isaac, Etwan Moore all rolled out of this one. We'll check to see if we have a line. We do. 214 game total. Atlanta being favored by 10.5 points. I'll pass it over to you. Why don't you start us off with Orlando? Yeah, and Atlanta themselves are coming on uh, back-to-back over here as well, so that's going to likely make this potentially a bit closer than that 10.5 because you know, it's one of those where Atlanta isn't been hasn't been great as far as the defensive side of the ball is concerned, and Cole Anthony just continues to be that guy who has the greenest of green lights as far as shots are concerned. And even though he's coming off two games where he just absolutely stunk it up from the field, he still will get you the kind of ancillary stats to be able to get there. Dropped 40 in the last game, even though he went four of 16. So he's always a guy that, as far as I'm concerned, as long as he stays below 8,000, he stays in my player pool. And then Mo Bamba, between him and uh, Wendell Carter Jr., you know they they run a lot of those lineups together, which has made it really good for Bamba to be able to get a lot of those help side blocks. I mean, he dropped 49 in the last game, and his floor is pretty well secure in that low to mid 30s. So at 6,900, very very attractive price tag as far as I'm concerned. Atlanta again, not a uh, super you know heavily sized team, but they do like to run a lot of uh, action with Capella, where you'll get that opportunity to have Mobamba be able to get some of those blocks just from the fact that they'll be throwing a lot of that stuff up there. So I look forward to uh, another good Mobamba night, but those are the two major dudes I'm looking at. Yeah, I don't have a ton of interest over here. It's just not the best game line, not the highest game total. We have 11 games, so we don't need to go crazy. Uh, the one guy that you know you could consider is Cole Anthony for me. It, the shot attempts, the usage, everything continues to be there. It's a good matchup for him going against a guy like Trey Young. We know that Trey Young has, is statistically one of the worst defenders in the NBA. So I don't mind taking a stab at him, but outside of that, I, I just don't see myself going to too, too much over here. Um, on the Atlanta side of the ball, kind of feeling the same over here as well. I want to keep an eye on uh, Cam Reddish because I believe he limped off the court, went back to the locker room holding his knee. So decent chance he's not playing in this one. We also know that DeAndre Hunter missed uh, on Sunday's game as well. So with that being said, we'll probably see Kevin Ware to draw a start. And at 3,800, he's another one of those good value plays at shooting guard and small forward that we can consider. So I have no issues looking at Werder. Bogdanovich would fall on that too. He'd see some increased usage and shot attempts if both those guys happen to sit. But I think I'd probably just opt to go with the $1,300 less for a guy like Werder. Uh, and that's probably it. I don't think I'm going to go too crazy over here. You know, I can see Capella and Collins, you know, the both bear price tags, both in good spots. But I uh, think I have other options I'd rather just go to at the end of the day. And I just don't want to spend up too, too much in this game unless I'm running it back with, a, like I said, a guy like Cole Anthony on the other side of the ball. Yeah, completely fair. I don't think there's much more to add there. Kevin Herter is my only guy as well. 
All right. On to the next 7.30 Eastern time game. Indiana Pacers traveling to New York. They are taking on the Knickerbockers. Uh, Chris Duarte is questionable. Right shoulder soreness. TJ Warren out for the Knicks. Nerlens Noel is questionable as well. He hasn't played in a few games, so I, I would probably lean more towards the side of doubtful or out. But we'll have to keep an eye on that news because obviously that will impact that front court rotation. 219 and a half game total. New York being favored by one and a half. I'll let you start with the Pacers. Yeah, with the Pacers, it's all about uh, health for them. And this looks like one of the few games outside of perhaps Duarte being out and obviously TJ Warren continues to be that they are looking at a starting lineup being pretty well healthy. Malcolm Brogdon, since he's come back, has had three just incredibly good games and has found himself at a price tag that's actually quite interesting to me at 8200 for you know, considering he's dropped 49 and 44 in the last two games, he's actually got a bit of a discount there. So uh, a spot where I'll be interested to be able to go in. And, you know, I just continue to love Miles Turner. As as long as his price tag stays below 7,000 for me, he's always in my player pool. Had a monster game against the Knicks last time, you know, dropped 57 on them. I don't necessarily expect him to uh, do that, but his floor is pretty secure in that uh, low to mid-30s. And he said the kind of upside that you can get, he can drop you a 50 on a good night. So uh, between Brogdon and Turner, those are my major guys over there. And then uh, if you wanted to you know, potentially have a dart throw, Justin Holiday. Uh, even outside of the fact that you know you don't want to be chasing the last game. But he's getting those uh, opportunities to be able to continue shooting. And if Duarte is out, you'll likely find him uh, back in an opportunity where he could get double-digit shot attempts. So something to keep an eye out for as well. Yeah, I, if Duarte sits, I want to see who starts. It could be McConnell and they just slide Brogdon up to the two. Or it could be uh, sliding Levert down and then putting Holiday at the three. It could be either one of those. I could see either one happen. But if McConnell were to draw the start, I'd have some interest in him at 5,600. Uh, and I don't mind taking a stab at Levert with his price tag down. At minutes, they're not there. They're not totally comfortable. But if we hear that, you know, there's no sort of restrictions, which he did have in that last game, home play 25 minutes. But if he's playing without any restrictions and he sees over 30 plus 6,700, we know what kind of upside this guy has. But it's nothing, you know, safe and comparable that you could trust uh, in your cash games or anything like that. Strictly a GPP play. But everything else that you said, I'm right there on board with. On the Knicks side of the ball. Kemba Walker had that explosion game. I had plenty of shares with him. Uh, really, really, really happy about that one. I, it was it was just everything, you know, perfect storm. Went back to Charlotte. We know that Charlotte gives up some of the most he, uh, shots and three-pointers or points to three-pointers. So everything went well for Kemba, 5,400. He said that he wanted, He kind of called himself out in the media and said that he needs to step up, that he hasn't been playing aggressive, and he needs to be that guy that brings the energy. So we might be seeing a turn of the page for Kemba Walker. And if he's playing 30 plus minutes at 5,400, he's most certainly in play. Just be careful. Wouldn't overload on him if you're building multiple lineups. Get him in one or two, sure, why not? But at 5,400, it's a great price tag if he's playing 30 plus minutes. Outside of him, though, I am good with everybody else. Yeah, I think Kemba is probably the major guy. The uh, other one with uh, Nerlens Noel and these guys being out, you've seen that they've actually gone a bit smaller, and Alec Burks has gotten a bump as far as his minutes and shot attempts are concerned. So uh, he's a bit more priced up than that 3500 which I did have a good amount of shares of in the last game. But still, with his uh, capability to be able to get you those uh, those big scoring nights, and he's actually getting a decent amount of rebounds, at 4200 it might be something you may want to look at. All right, we'll keep it moving. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game, Denver Nuggets traveling to Dallas, taking on my maps. Uh, Nuggets on the second half of a back-to-back. As far as a game total, we have a two. Let me get this right. Make sure I don't say it wrong. 209 game total. Uh, Dallas being favored by four points in this one. No injury report for the Nuggets, but for Mavericks, we know Max DeCleaver is out. So I'll pass it over to you. Bring me through the Nuggets. You don't catch at 11-7. Are you paying for him? I mean, I don't think you can ever go wrong with deciding to go with Jokic at 11-7. There are other options that are slightly cheaper later on the slate. That's probably going to be my stud of choice. But if I do decide to uh, make a little bit of change as far as that's concerned, Jokic is in there. But really uh, where I have a little bit of interest as far as the cheap side is concerned is with Bones Highland. And it's just clear that uh, you you saw how much Michael Malone uh, raved about him at the end of the game. They really do want him to get a lot more involved. They like his offense, and he's getting those ancillary stats as well. So as as long as he's staying at this kind of price tag, I'm more than happy to give give another shot with him. And uh, other than that, I mean, Aaron Gordon had a monster game in the last one. Looks like he's getting a little bit more comfortable with all of these 
uh, injuries that are going around, his offense and his role is starting to get a little bit more defined so that MPJ injury might be a blessing in disguise as far as he's concerned. And his price tag does give you that little bit of a uh, little bit of upside if he can have even anywhere close to the kind of game he had last time. But his floor is also quite safe. So those are the two major guys. And Monte Morris just continues to be that uh, enigma for me. I mean, he shot four of 13 the last game, four of 10 in the game before that. And, you know, he's still pretty much hit value on those ones. So if he can get a shot to be even half decent, they're going to likely play him the kind of minutes that'll allow him to get to that price tag. So hopefully he can have a better offensive night and he could be a pretty decent pick. Yeah, if him and Bones just came out of this team in the same season, Bones Highland would be starting over him. No. Um, it's just that he happened to be here. He has to trust him alone. He's more of a veteran point guard. All that good stuff uh, is what's keeping him holding the starting job for so long. But I'm with you. I think Bones is a nice value. The other guy I would throw in there would be Jeff Green at 3,800. Has a small forward and power forward eligibility. Uh, three straight games with at least 28 minutes played. The usage isn't all that high, but we know Jeff Green could just pour it on in bunches at points. Uh, if the game's going well for him, uh, it, it could be a profitable night for him. So I don't mind taking a look at Jeff Green, kind of like this matchup for him. I think Jokic is very, very much in play. Dallas is just terrible against opposing centers. They have been for about a year and a half now. So we can continue looking at that. And then Will Barton, as always, with the usage being there for him. He struggled in that last one mightily. Couldn't hit a shot if uh, water if he fell out of a boat, 2 of 11. Uh, 6800 price tag starting to get up there. We have some other good small forwards that we've already talked about. So I don't see myself getting too many shares of them. But I do see myself having maybe one or two out there. On to the Dallas side of the ball, Chris Tapps, Porzingis, 7K. If this guy's healthy and if he's under you know that $7,700 range, you could play him. It's just that simple for me. Uh, he's going to keep absorbing a lot of this usage. He's going to keep getting the blocks. He's going to keep getting decent boards every single game. So... So many ways that he could do it, and this is game should be relatively competitive. So good matchup going against undersized Aaron Gordon for the most part. So I, I really have no issues going with Porzingis. I think I prefer to play Jokic over Doncic for four hundred dollars difference. Wouldn't argue with you if you wanted to play with Doncic though. Uh, you know both these guys could drop a triple double with a ton of points any given night. So they're both very much in play. And honestly, there's enough value on the slate where if you wanted to play both of them, you probably could uh, and still feel pretty comfortable about it. But those are you know the real guy I'm looking at is Porzingis. Yeah, and Porzingis, you know, as much as you've hyped him up, I think he's probably my like mid-tier guy to pick up the night. I just like the price tag that he continues to be at and how you know, watching a good bit of Dallas games as well, you just get to see how much more Porzingis looks engaged as far as his offensive role is concerned. You can see he at the start of the season he was being a little bit passive, but now they're starting to feed him not only down low, but you know, giving him more of those opportunities to hit those top of the break threes. So all of that just spells for a good spot as far as his uh, value is concerned. And yeah, if I find myself going for Doncic, I'll probably do that uh, Jokic and Doncic stack and just go for all the value that's on here. But likely not, Porzingis is the main guy I'm going with. That will be a fun game to watch if you do. I would yeah. have to probably I would have to go buy some tickets for that one if I <laughs> if I stacked up that too many times. I'll be the next one. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. Houston Rockets traveling to Memphis, taking on the Grizzlies. John Morant just continues to make me look dumb uh, every time I say you know don't look at him, don't look at him. Uh, but it is what it is. I'll, I'll keep probably taking it off the chin, and I imagine I'll probably take this one off the chin as well. Uh, you just have to see with, with the price tags being out there right now. But for the Grizzlies, they are good to go. No real injuries. Rockets, we do not have their injury report. Second half of back-to-back for them. As far as the game total is concerned, we have a 221. Memphis being favored by a whopping 11 points. Uh, I'll start us off here. I'll let you take the Grizzlies. I'll take the Rockets. Pretty easy for me with the Rockets. One guy I am considering, uh, actually, I guess we could say two. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr., don't mind looking at him at 6,200. I think this is a good matchup for him. like the pace, like everything to do with this one. Grizzlies haven't been playing very good defense as of late. Maybe that changes now with Dylan Brooks being back, but still fair, fair price tag for him, so I have no issues going there. And then the other spot would be Christian Wood. Uh, 8K, we're used to seeing this guy have a price tag of like 9K at one point, but due to three down games over the last one, this dude is pretty much due for another big one. Uh, this could be the matchup for it at AK. I think I still prefer Porzingis slightly uh, for $700 cheaper, but they're also two different positions. Wood only has center eligibility, which hurts him. Don't know why he doesn't have power forward eligibility on DraftKings. He should, considering that's pretty much been the position he's played for all season, but he doesn't. So I don't think I'll end up getting to him just because of the eligibility, but those are the two guys I'd really look at. Some of these other guys wouldn't fault you if you wanted to go there. They're more or less... In dart throws, um, like Eric Gordon, if you wanted to take a shot at him at 46. But we've talked about some of that $3,500 value, which I like more than him. 
Yeah, I think you've hit the major ones. Uh, I always like Jishan Tate just from a all-around stat perspective, but his price tag is a little bit up, so I'll probably find myself going with just Kevin Porter if I do. All right, why don't you take us with the Grizzlies? Yep, and going on to the Grizzlies side of things, obviously John Morant has just continued to be a guy that I find myself having in a lot of my lineups, but in this game, where I do expect it to uh, not be all that competitive, to be honest, even though the game total is pretty high, I'm actually finding myself uh, looking more at the uh, the cheap side of things as far as they're concerned. Uh, Jaron Jackson at 6,000 continues to be a guy that just... You know, has a price tag that should be doing better than he is, but then he has games where his you know minutes total is down because his shots are down. But then at the previous one before that, he'll have 37. So, you know, it's one of those where in a GPP area with that power forward eligibility, 6,000 is a spot that you know, I'll, I'll usually like uh, Jaron Jackson. And in previous Houston games, in uh, previous years, he's had a number of monster nights, especially from three against them. So I could easily see him having another one here. And then the other side... Uh, you know, if they are going to be playing a lot more Christian Wood at center, Stephen Adams is, continues. It eludes me as to why they like him, but it, it, considering how young the team is, but they still keep throwing him into there. I mean, he has 37 minutes in the uh, Pelicans game, the previous one. And again, the uh, Houston team has got enough size that they could probably see him playing a little bit more of that as well to try to counteract that. So for 5,100, again, th- there's a lot of center options that are out there, but uh, Stephen Adams would probably be able to pay off his uh, price tag pretty easily. I could even see him having a 6X night. Yeah, I'll keep it short and sweet. I, I don't think I'm playing anybody from Memphis. I, I, I want to play Steven Adams. I had a little bit of him in that last game just because the matchup made sense going against Joe Val. Um, does he get to the 30-minute mark or 28-minute mark? That's that's what we need to wonder. Um, if he does, fantastic play. If he doesn't, we're left holding the bag. So I'll probably have very, very modest share. Still a good price tag, but this doesn't feel like a matchup that I have that same certainty as I did was when they went against Joe Val. We, because like you said, do they, I mean, if we some new Christian would just play at center, sure. We consider it, but um, he's been playing a lot of that power forward position. So I just don't necessarily fully, fully trust it. Mm-hmm. Uh, on to the next game. We have Phoenix Suns traveling to Minnesota, taking on the Timberwolves. Uh, as of right now, we do not have an injury report for either team which feels a little shocking, but we don't. Um, and as far as a game total in line, we do. 222 game total. Phoenix being favored by three points. Starting off with the Phoenix Suns, looking at them, DeAndre Ayton, even though he's not in the injury report, most likely going to be ruled out. This is going to be the second half of the back-to-back. He sat out Sunday's game. Wouldn't shock me if he missed another one. Uh, they're being very cautious or just mysterious about this whole leg injury or knee injury. They said at first he bumped knees, and he even came out and said, I'll be fine. They said he'll be fine. Well, clearly he's not fine. Uh, it's been enough games now where it's like, what's going on? Is he coming back? So if he does play, that takes a little bit of the luster away from guys like JaVel McGee and Frank Kaminsky. But if he sits, I have no issues looking at a guy like Frank uh, Frank Kaminsky. I know the price tag's now up there at 5600 but I always like the target centers going against Carl Anthony Towns because he's pretty putrid at defense. For as good as he is on offense and, you know, as great of a young player as he is, uh, he cannot guard anybody. So I have no issues looking at Kaminsky. I don't think I'll be paying that $8,900 price tag for Booker, although it won't shock me if he has a good one here. Uh, he's actually – this is a little narrative for Towns and for Booker. Those two guys are actually like best friends. So wouldn't shock me if we see both these guys playing with a little bit more energy, dapping each other up before the game. But – I just don't have a lot of interest over here. And the only other guy I would consider would be the guy like Jay Crowder, who continues just to play modest minutes and give you uh, a five X return on his $4,800 salary. So that's probably what I'm looking at. Really be Frank tank uh, and Crowder. If there's no eight in, and if you wanted to be contrarian, you can look at Booker. Fair enough. And I think the, uh, Initial interest for me was just the fact that it had the highest game total and the fact that the spread was only sitting at like plus three. So at some point, someone's going to have to go. I may find myself going a little contrarian and have some Mikael Bridges in here just to get a little bit of uh, exposure on a guy who has a pretty safe floor and you know, gets uh, gets enough shots to be able to go a little bit beyond that because I just can't see myself paying that 86 or 8900 for Chris Paul or Booker. Uh, yeah, Frank the Tank is uh, always an option on there, but... You know, given this uh, high total, it's the Minnesota side that I found myself with uh, a good bit more interest. And, you know, we're speaking about the 11,000s and those guys that are up there. I actually think Carl Anthony Towns is due to have an absolutely monster game here. And he's had a number of them against Phoenix. Maybe it's that Devin Booker connection, but he seems to really like going up against them. So at uh, at 10-2... And on a uh, on a night where DeAndre Ayton's out, he's just going to be absolutely feasting on the inside, whether it be McGee, whether it be Frank thrown out there. They 
can't defend him as much as he can do it on the other side. He'll be uh, more than likely to give him back that and more. So that's a, a part of interest for me. And the uh, other one, and this more of a, a cheap guy to be able to throw as a dart throw at the end, is uh, Jaden McDaniels. You know, his minutes uh, total has continued to not only rise, but it's the shot attempts that are getting more interesting. So even though the last uh, game it was a bit of a blowout and he got a little bit more at the end. Still hit double digit shot attempts in both of those games. And even though he dropped 29 at 3,200, there's not too much downside to be able to get him there. And considering the amount of studs that they have in place, you can find yourself having him there as a pretty safe value to get his five uh, X plus back. And that was the biggest thing with McDaniels is his usage yeah. rate. I think it's early on in the season was like less than 10%. It was something like seven or 8%. Um, just wasn't getting any shot attempts. You're really just banking on the defensive stats, which he could rack up very easily. This is a better suited matchup for him as well. I don't think they'll go big. They'll probably play a decent amount of him even at the four, where he normally starts naturally at the three. Um, yeah, I have no issues with Cat here. I think that I think you're right. I think it's a good bounce back spot coming off of a really really down game. It's not very often you see Cat shoot only 11 shot attempts and let alone only shooting 20 uh, 27 percent on him. So I definitely don't mind looking at him. Uh, Edwards 7900. Again, don't mind looking at him. The price tag starting to come down a little bit on him. We've seen this, uh, you know, that upside of 40, but I think at 7,900, there's probably some other options on this site that are pretty interesting, either spending up a little bit or spending down a little bit. But if you're just trying to get exposure into this game, no, no D'Angelo Russell for me. And then Patrick Beverly at 41. I could see him getting a good amount of run going against a guy like Chris Paul. Decent value option, but I think I'd probably still prefer some of those $3,500 guys that we talked about earlier. Just think they have a little bit of a higher upside. But... On to the next game, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. Miami Heat traveling to OKC to take on the Thunder. So this is going to be a game where we're going to have to monitor some of the news. Uh, Jimmy Butler is questionable. Bam Adebayo is probable. Markeith Morris, Victor Oladipo, both out. Markeith did not travel with the team. Thunder on the second half of a back-to-back. So we do not have uh, their line or um, their injury report as of right now. Looking at the game total and the spreads, guess what? Don't have it. Got to wait on that Jimmy Butler news. I think that's probably more of the most important news. Obviously, that would greatly affect this. Looking at Miami, though, if there's no Jimmy Butler, uh, you could play all three of these guys. You could play two of them in a lineup. I mean, we know OKC is pretty terrible. We know they play at a quick pace. They're trying to lose the game, but they somehow manage to stay just competitive enough where we can get big lines out of a couple of their guys sometimes and guys on the other side of the ball. But Tyler Hero, 6,600, absolutely fantastic play if there's no Jimmy. If there is Jimmy, you can still play him in this matchup. He'll still see 30 minutes, and he can still pour it on. So I have no issues with Tyler Hero no matter what. But Kyle Lowry, I'd have a little bit more interest with Jimmy out. Bam out of bio, 81, a little bit more interest with Jimmy out. But I still think all three of these guys are in playing. If Jimmy plays at 9K, I don't think I'll have any interest in him. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much what it's coming down to. The Jimmy Butler news, the only other side that I've had a little bit of interest in is just P.J. Tucker again, uh, purely because he's been racking up big boards for them, even with uh, everyone there. He's got double-digit rebounds in the last three games. Uh, as long as he gets that, he's probably going to end up somewhere between 20 to 30, which at uh, 3,800 is a great spot to be able to get him at. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Duncan, too, but I, you know, the price is getting up there where you know, when he was 3,800 and like 4K, I, I was all over that. Um, yeah. But, you know, 4,700, he still has the upside to beat that. I just don't think I'll have shares. Of Sorry, I cut you off. You continue with OKC. No worries. Yeah, and as far as OKC is concerned, I mean, that's where it all comes down to. If Jimmy's out, there's a better chance that the game is uh, somewhat closer. And in that case, I may potentially see myself having a little bit of interest in Shea Gilgis Alexander just because, you know, some offense has got to come from somewhere, and he has just continued to be that guy for this team, continuing to keep games close that OKC probably had no business being in. Uh, beyond that, uh, Lou Dort has been really the revelation over the last couple of games as far as his offense is concerned. And really, that's been kind of the key to unlocking the rest of his fantasy capabilities because he's getting the minutes. He's going to be able to be involved enough to rack up a couple of steals. He'll get you a block. He'll get some rebounds. But it's all about whether he can hit uh, consistently on the high double digits as far as his points are concerned. So 9 of 18 in the last game, 8 of 13 before that. And the best part of it is that even though his three-point shot hasn't been going, he's been attacking the rim with just absolute... You know, no disdain, no regard for humanity, as uh, a uh, famous commentator would once say. So at 5,000, I'm very excited to be able to go on and take him. And, you know, there's that Canadian connection as well. So just go ahead and drop Lou Dort in there. Yeah, well, now I got to keep him in my fire, Paul, because you just <laughs> dropped the Canadian connection line. So um, I pretty much agree with everything you said, where I don't mind taking shots at Shea. I don't think I'll end up with too much of him, though, overall. 
I think this feels like more of a Derek Favors game. Uh, so it wouldn't shock me if he starts. Doesn't mean I'm going to be overly excited about him. Just don't know if they would trust a guy like uh, Jeremy Rob- uh, Jeremiah Robinson Earl to just go against Bam. Feels like a really bad matchup for him where he would probably just get chewed up alive. Maybe I, mean, I don't know how much fav- better favors will do, but offers a little bit more size. So I think this is probably a favors game. But I- I'm-, I'm not really too interested in anybody over here. There's a couple guys I you know, I kind of want to think about running it back with. But uh, overall, with some of these other guys that we've already talked about, I'll probably just go elsewhere. Two games left. Your Toronto Raptors traveling to Portland, taking on the Trailblazers. Portland, no injury report available for the Raptors. Precious is questionable. Boucher is questionable. Van Vliet is questionable. Obviously, a lot of this news is going to greatly affect the slate. So you're going to try your best to hold out as long as you could. If you do, just make sure you have some good, uh, some good pivots available for you. Because, you know, Van Vliet all of a sudden plays, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to muck up the waters a little bit. But as far as the game total and all that, we do not have it. Van Vliet news is enough to hold it back. Looking at the Toronto side of the ball, Van Vliet sits. That's the big one that we're waiting on. Dragic at 41 becomes almost a must play for me. Uh, I'll definitely have a ton of shares of him. So I wouldn't mind looking at him. Siakam at 8,300. Wouldn't mind taking a look at him. Nurse came out and said that there's going to be no limitations. There's going to be nothing going on with that. Uh, he's going to be able to play back-to-backs. He's no minutes restriction anymore. He's good to go. So 8,300, knowing that the usage is basically going to get funneled right through him, I'll have some interest in him as well. And then trying to guess it right on Scotty Barnes and OG, it's a tough challenge. We have other guys that, if, you know, like OG at 7,500. I think I'd rather play Porzingis at 7K. There's just a few other guys on this slate where I don't think I need to go there. I'm not going to rule them out with my player pool just yet. But it's it's tough to guess which one. Usually one of them has a good game. The other one has a little bit of a down game. Uh, so I'll probably just keep it at Siakam, keep it at Dragic. And then if you needed a dart throw, dumpster dive, if Van Vliet's rolled out, you can look at Delano Banton. Uh, only played 19 minutes, but the dude's aggressive. He's a lengthy point guard. He can rack up a couple of rebounds here and there. He can get a steal here and there. But I just realized I took your Toronto Raptors from you, and I feel bad now. I apologize. So I should I should have let you do that. But uh, throw some more in here. I know you're more knowledgeable about them. What else do you have? I mean, hey, I, I think you've hit the nail on the head on the main guys there. I was actually quite surprised at the last game that they decided to go with Dragic because the uh, you know the initial thing made it seem like Malachi Flynn would get the opportunity to be able to play more. And frankly, every Toronto Raptor fan has been asking for why he hasn't. But hey, if they're going to keep going and throwing Dragic out there at 4100, he's going to be a must play. Uh, Freddie is questionable and. You know, he was able to practice, but honestly, it's more than likely that he doesn't play. But the only other thing that may be of potential interest is the Gary Trent one. And again, 37 in each of the last two games. You got to remember, he's going back to Portland here. It's a revenge game. This is where the trade happened. Norman Powell going there, Gary Trent coming back. And he just continues to be the guy that they are relying to be, honestly, as a primary shot creator. I mean, Siakam is obviously going to be uh, you know, doing his thing. But if you watch a lot of the games last time as well, they're using him to facilitate a lot more. Gary Trent is kind of their first guy to be able to get that first shot. If that doesn't go, then they start looking around. So you could see him getting a lot more usage, and uh, I could see him easily paying off that 5,800. Yeah, I think your boy Malachi is just pretty much phased out of yeah. the rotation. And you could, you could <laughs> think Banton for that. Uh, Banton just came on the scene and stole his job. Uh, clear, clear cut. That's it. I, I didn't expect it to happen this soon in the season. I didn't even know if it would happen because Malachi gave them good minutes last season. Uh, but ever, ever since the season started, he just hasn't been in the rotation as much as, you know, people thought, or I guess would have liked. Um, but it is what it is. Looking at this trailblazer side of the ball, why don't you start us off? Damian Lillard sat out Sunday due to the abdominal injury. Most likely will sit out the back end of the back to back as well, but something we need to monitor. Yeah, and as soon as Dame is out, I mean, Anthony Simons at 3,500 becomes an absolute must play. And you know, spoiler alert, he's going to be my uh, cheap pick of the night as well. Uh, just at, at the price tag, at the shot attempts, he's definitely going to get likely into that low to mid double digits. Uh, he's going to be a great spot to be able to go. And then uh, at the same way, I don't necessarily trust myself going all the way to CJ McCollum, even though every time I say that, he always goes ahead and proves me wrong. But I have a bad history with picking CJ McCollum, so I may see myself going with Norman Powell instead. Just one, because I like to have that guy I can shove at the small forward spot. And then at 5,400, he's just going to be able to get enough offense going through him. You know, likes going off against the Toronto Raptors yet again as well. And, uh, you know, you could easily see him dropping a low 20s as far as his points are concerned, which with everything else, will probably have him in the uh, mid 30s as far as DK points are concerned. So nice spot to be able to go. 
Yeah, I'm with you. Simon's absolutely fantastic value play. I do like McCollum a lot. This feels like a one of the – the one thing is when Dame sits, Simon's may draw the start of point guard, but he's not like a traditional point guard who's going to be able to rack up you know seven or eight assists. So you'll still see CJ have the ball in his hands a whole lot. Wouldn't surprise me if he's the one bringing up the ball the most part tonight. Uh, but I think McCollum, Powell, and Simons, all three of those guys are very, very much in play. And this feels like it could be a good matchup for Nurkic. We can't trust the minutes, so only in your GPPs. But he's 6,600. Put together a couple strong performances over the past four games. Three out of the four, he has at least 30 DK points. Two of those are 43-plus in limited minutes. So I could definitely see him taking advantage of this battered front court for Toronto, especially if they run Siakam at center. It could be a situation where he does find himself in foul trouble. We know Siakam's not afraid to attack. But at 6,600, I think he makes for a good tournament play. Final game of the night, 10.30 Eastern Standard Time game. Chicago Bulls traveling to L.A. No injury report for either team. Uh, both teams on the back end of back-to-back. And then I don't believe, yep, we do, 218.5 game total. Uh, Lakers favored by one. I'll pass it over to you. Why don't you start with Chicago? Yeah, and... You know, with Nikola Vucevic entering his COVID protocols out for the next 10 days, that definitely opens up a lot of usage for these other guys there. Uh, the one little wrinkle that's of interest is that uh, Kobe White could find himself returning. And, you know, he's going to be getting up to shot attempts. We don't know what kind of minutes he'll have, but obviously his 6,200 price tag is not one there. But it could be uh, something of interest because it could take away shots from DeRozan and Levine. Between those two, I'm likely to go more towards Levine at 8,100 one because he's likely to lead the team in shot attempts and more so than that, uh, he has more of a three-point range to him. So that allows him to be able to rack up a lot more of those uh, quick DK points. That being said, uh, just by and large, honestly, the Chicago team doesn't uh, interest me all that much. Uh, The price tags are pretty good. They're pretty fair, but there's just more value to be had overall. So if I'm looking into this, it'll probably be, uh, you know, seeing what kind of minutes Tony Bradley gets. Is he going to be starting? Is he actually going to get an opportunity to do something, which may make him okay for 3,500? But uh, by and large, beyond that, not really all that interested. Yeah, I think this could be a Bradley game. Uh, We know that the past few games, we were waiting to see what they did with Vucevic out. But they always were against pretty small teams, you know, teams that want to play small. So this isn't the same type of team. Lakers want to play big. Uh, they want to play Davis at power forward. They want to start DeAndre Jordan or run alongside of, uh, you know, Dwight Howard alongside of him as well. So I think this could be a Bradley game. Wouldn't shock me if Alizé Johnson ends up playing a couple minutes. But whoever starts at that five, I have interest in. Alizé is probably the better fantasy player uh, just overall. But Whoever's starting at that, and I think they're both in play, to be honest. They, they don't, this is a stars and scrub type night. We already talked about so many fantastic value plays. So would make sense if you could load up, pay up on guys like Doncic and Jokic. Maybe you stack that game. Maybe you play Carl Anthony Towns. However you want to do it, there's many ways you could. And it's just going to be tough. With all the value at the guard position, I think you know paying down at center doesn't feel as optimal as it normally would, especially not knowing which guy is going to be the starter. Uh, probably be Bradley, though. And then uh, I know you said you're more on Levine. I won't fault you there. I have a little bit more interest in DeRozan, simply because there's two narratives I always look at. It's narratives against going against your former team, and it's hometown narratives. Uh, DeMar is an L.A. kid. So he's, he's generally always played well when he comes to play one of these uh, L.A. teams. And I don't think it will change here, especially knowing that the increased usage with Vucevic off the floor, not, in, not anticipating Kobe. If Kobe White affects anybody, it might just be Caruso. Uh, that's probably the guy that he eats into the most. These starters' minutes are secured. Their starters, you know, Levine, DeRozan, their usage is not going anywhere. Vucevic couldn't affect their usage. I don't, I don't see how Kobe White really will. So I, uh, I got interest in both those guys, but I think I just hedged slightly more towards DeRozan. I guess the issue comes to I like him more than Kristaps. Uh, probably not, but I, I, I am going to have some lineups with him uh, nonetheless. So that's pretty much where I'm looking. On to the other side of the ball, though, looking at this Lakers team. LeBron James will continue to be out as well as Kendrick Nunn. We do know, though, we just saw it today, uh, the return of Taylor Horton Tucker. And guess what? We have more value because he's minimum salary. Uh, does he play on the back-to-back? I think so. He played 27 minutes in today's game. And it's not like he was dealing with a muscle injury or a knee injury or anything. He had uh, surgery on his thumb ligament. So I don't think that's really going to hold him out of the back-to-back. And, you know, Does he play 30 minutes? Probably not. He's probably in that mid-20s range somewhere. But definitely somebody to keep an eye on at only minimum salary at 3K. I definitely have some interest in him. Outside of him, you know, LeBron, uh, LeBron being out, Westbrook, Anthony Davis, both these guys are high-priced guys. Looking at them, they both offer a tremendous, tremendous upside. We know that. 
there's a lot of high price guys we could pay for. I still think I prefer Jokic. I still think I prefer Doncic, but it wouldn't fault you if you. I think Jokic is probably the best point per dollar guy uh, or raw points guy in the slate. But I, I mean, it's tough, man. I think I, I think I do think I do slightly prefer Davis over Doncic, but the back to back kind of sours me ever so slightly. They could just come out flat here. But you take you tell me. Those are the only guys I'm really looking at. It would be Taylor Horton, Tucker, Westbrook, Davis. I'm uh, not paying 53 for Camelo uh, against this team, but that's just what I'm looking at. You tell me. Yeah, fair enough. And then the Anthony Davis side, I mean, his ownership is likely going to be just slightly higher just because of the fact that he had an absolute monster game today. So that uh, in and of itself makes it so that you know, I probably want to avoid him just for, to not be uh, part of the uh, entire rabble. Uh, Malik Monk, though, continues to be a guy that uh, I do have interest in at 4,100. I mean, he's getting his double digit shot attempts since LeBron has been out and his minutes just continue to go up to a point where you know, he's pretty secure in his uh, mid to high 20 minutes role. So you know, I probably will have some of uh, Taylor Horton Tucker just because you know, minimum salary, a guy who really shouldn't have any trouble getting anywhere between you know 20 to 22 DK points, which is obviously solid for that price. But I could see Malik Monk being the guy who ends up uh, really getting a lot of shot attempts on a, on a game where, honestly, Anthony Davis on back-to-backs has never been my most preferred option. He always just finds a way to almost dog it on the second one. So I'll probably find uh, myself avoiding him. And just since I'm going with all the expensive guys, I might have a little bit of Malik Monk here. Yeah, that's the thing. The only problem I've run in with Malik Monk is how many guards that we've talked about already. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it, it, does he? He's not there with Simons for me. I think he's a pretty close to Holiday. I think I still slightly prefer Holiday and the number of other guys that we did talk about. But uh, Taylor Horton Tucker, at least we get some of that small forward eligibility, which we know we talked about. It sucks. We hate playing good small forwards. We don't want to pay up there. We want to spend down. That way we can get the guys that we know are going to drop triple doubles on a nightly basis for us. But yeah, I'm kind of with you with the back to back thing with Davis. It does sour me. Uh, I do like this matchup for him a lot. I just don't know who they're going to throw at him or who they could throw at him. It's going to be a struggle for whoever does try to do that. So if I had to pick between him and Westbrook, I think I still slightly prefer Davis. But they could just – I have a feeling the Lakers just might come out flat in this one. But that's it. That is the entire slate, all 11 games, broken down for you guys. So we're going to jump into our player tier segment, which we kind of already know, I think, where, where you're going with a lot of these guys. So I'll let you start off, though. Who's your stud of the night? Yeah, and and we obviously have the major ones between Jokic and Doncic that are there, but I go back to Carl Anthony Towns as my favorite stud of the night. Uh, Just everything with uh, the Phoenix matchup, the fact that he's got a great matchup on the other side without DeAndre Ayton, and his 10,200 price tag to me is just too cheap for what Carl Anthony Towns can do. So 100% my stud of the night. Yeah, I'll go with Jokic. Uh, it's It's just simple for me. The dude's usage is through the roof right now. Small sample size, but he's sporting a usage over 35%. Uh, he's averaging almost like, I think, again, small sample size, uh, but the dude's averaging over like 1.7 DK points per minute right now with Michael Porter Jr. off the floor uh, with, uh, you know, it's just hard to ignore it. Um, I'll, I know the Dallas sucks, just sucks against centers. <laughs> I watch their games every night. It's not fun to watch opposing centers just tear us apart. Jokic should be no different. So 11-7, uh, I play me some Jokic on to the mid tier. We know where you're going with this one, but. Yeah, Dallas I mean, you already, spoke, you already spoke about Dallas, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there. The uh, Christoph Porzingis train is well and truly out of the station for me. 7,000, I love his upside. I've got him in pretty much every season-long fantasy team as well, so really hoping he can continue his uh, current trend. But at 7,000, he should have a great matchup to be able to drop 40-plus, so he's my mid-tier guy of the night. I always like to give two if there's somebody that I'm going to mention due to a, an injury that we're not 100% certain on. So there's a nice little fallback plan. But Tyler Hero for me at 66 going against OKC if Jimmy Butler sits. Um, and then if Jimmy Butler plays and you just don't feel as comfortable about Tyler Hero, uh, there's there's a number of guys in this range. So, But I'll go with CJ, uh, 7,700. I just love the usage that he should draw. I think the ball handling, I could easily see a big CJ McCollum game here where we're looking at probably about 45 upside of 50 DK points. Uh, into the value range. We know where you're going, but let us know. Opposite side or backcourt made of CJ. Yep, the backcourt made of CJ. Anthony Simons at 3,500. As you said, he's not a traditional point guard, but he has never seen a shot that he doesn't like. And you know he's going to drop a- anywhere between 15 to 18 shots on this game, and that'll easily allow him to pay off his 3,500, even if he hits 40% of them. And the good thing is he takes a lot of those as threes. So you just need a couple of them to go down, and you'll be feeling pretty happy. All right. Two caveat plays because we don't necessarily know the news on Fred Van Vliet. If he sits, Goran Dragic, 4,100. 
Um, and if Fred Van Vliet plays, it's another kind of guy that we need to monitor the news with. Um, but I think I'd, I really don't mind looking at a guy like Taylor Horton Tucker at 3K, minimum salary. You really don't need a whole lot from the guy, but the Lakers are expecting a lot from him. Uh, he would have been the starting shooting guard to start the season. We've already seen Bazemore move to the bench in his first game back. So definitely a lot of interest. And if for some reason he sits and Fred Van Vliet plays, there's so much value on here. Keep an eye on Kevin Werder at 38. Uh, another guy that we've seen really just capitalize on the usage. Cam Reddish lived off the court. DeAndre Hunter missed today's game. So there we go. We just gave you guys like a whole segment on player tiers. A uh, lot of good value here. It's going to be real hard not to lean into the, the Stars and Scrubs approach. But thank you guys for listening. Uh, Harris, I think people know where they can find you. And listen, people, bother him. Bother him on Twitter. Yeah, bother me all you want. I mean, we've given you all these tiers, and I'm sure there's going to be some people that have tears at the end of the night. So if you need to yell at me, no problem. At at H-A-K underscore devil, I'm ready to hear all the anger. No problem. But if something happened nice, let me know as well. It makes me feel good. Absolutely. And we'd love to see that. If you guys win money, uh, we're not saying it was because of us. I mean, this is a first look podcast. You're going to be the one spending the time building out those lineups, tinkering with them throughout the day. Uh, but a little shout doesn't hurt. And yeah, no, listen, if and if I say give you a bad play, go yell at Harris. Uh, you heard him say it. Uh, bother him with it. You know, <laughs> no, so, in, in all honesty, uh, you can let me have it as well. Uh, you can follow me at Mike Apatra, M-I-K-E-A-P-O-T-R-I-A. Thank you guys for listening. Go give us a thumbs up, five star rate review wherever you listen to this. Get the DFS pass. Well worth it. Discord all the time. Party time every day. It's happening. We'll be back tomorrow. Santino will be crushing the slate for you guys with DJ Sammy Caps. Take care. Let's go take down some tournaments. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation. From earaches to strep tests, there's Minute Clinic at CVS. See a provider, fill a prescription, and grab essentials. Or see us online with telehealth options. That's healthier made easier. Visit Minute Clinic at CVS today. Services vary by location. See miniclinic.com for details.